this is the famous or maybe even infamous sliding spool problem. So here I have a spool with a string wrapped around it and has the spool has an inner radius and an outer radius. And I'm going to try to do this. And I'm going to pull it. If I pull at a really steep angle like this, the spool rows, rolls that way. If I pull at a very low angle, this one's kind of cool, the spool rolls in the, rolls in the direction of the string. Actually, I need to wind that up a little bit. I don't have a perfect string because, you know, it does roll. There it goes. Okay. However, you can pull at some magic angle so that it slides. There, I got it. So let's find that angle that the spool slides and does not roll. Oops. Okay. So here I have my spool. I'm pulling with some string and it's got the two radiuses. Let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram because the first time I did this, I was thinking, oh, it has to do something with the coefficient of friction. So I have my coefficient of friction there. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to redraw the diagram. I'm going to draw all the forces acting on the, diag on the, on the spool. So here's my spool. I have the gravitational force Mg right there. And then I have the normal force. And the normal force uh, pushes up right there. It's kind of hard to draw in. Uh, and then I have the tension like that. And this is at some angle theta. And then finally, I have a frictional force. I'll put it right here. Okay. If I'm pulling and it's sliding and moving at a constant speed, then I can write the following three equations. F net in the x direction is zero, F net in the y direction is zero, and torque net about some point O is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and write down these equations. Um, so first I'm going to start with the net forces in the x direction. Uh, I have two forces in the x direction. I have a component of the tension right here, T cosine theta, and then the frictional force. So I can, I'm going to put it over here maybe. Maybe right here? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. T cosine theta minus the frictional force is equal to zero. Next, let's do the y equation. Here I have a component of the tension, T sine theta plus n minus mg equals zero. So I have a component of the tension, I have the downward gravitational force, and I have the upward normal force. And here's one of those things where the normal force is clearly not equal to the weight, right? Because they have this T sine theta term in there. Finally, I need to look at the sum of the torques about some point. And if the spool is not rotating about a point, it's not rotating about any point. So I can pick whatever point I want. Let's just pick the center right here. That will make the most sense. Point O is right there. So remember that torque is RF sine theta. That's very messy. RF sine theta. So F is the applied force. R is the distance from the point O to where the force is applied, and theta is the angle between them. So let's look at all these forces first. N has an R value of R2, but the angle between N and R is 180 degrees, and the sine of 180 is zero. Uh, the same thing for weight. Weight has an R of zero, so it has no torque. So these two forces exert no torque. Okay, so now I can write torque about net about the point O, I first have this tension, which is not a T. That's not a T, that's a tau, just so you know. Uh, that's going to exert a torque that would want to make it rotate this way, counterclockwise. So that's a positive torque. It's going to be T times R1. And then the angle between those is 90 degrees. The sine of 90 is 1. Then I have the uh, the frictional force pushing this way, and it's going to exert a torque of negative direction minus the frictional force uh, times R2. And that's equal to zero. Okay, so I have three equations. X equation, Y equation, 
torque equation. And I want to find theta. So let's take this equation and solve for the frictional force. Now, I wanted to solve for the frictional force using the coefficient of friction, but it turns out we don't need that. If I solve this for friction, I get T R1 equals the frictional force times R2, which gives me uh, the frictional force is equal to T R1 over R2. Now I can plug that in over here and I can solve for theta. So let's do that. I'm going to erase this up here. I feel like my space management skills, my board space management skills are poor. So T cosine theta minus, minus the frictional force, which is T R1 over R2 equals zero. Add that to both sides. T cosine theta is T R1 over R2. Oh goodness, look at there, the T's cancel. And now I can solve for theta. Theta is going to be the inverse cosine of R1 over R2. And let's just check, right? Um, the inverse cosine, I have to take the inverse cosine of a number between negative 1 and 1. And so R1 is the inner radius and it's going to be smaller than the outer radius. So this is a number less than 1 and it's going to give me the angle at which that needs to slide. And it does not depend on the coefficient of friction. If you want to try this, you can. Try pulling it on a rough surface and a smooth surface and looking at the angle. They're the same. I know it's kind of crazy, but that's true. Okay, that's your critical angle for making a spool slide and not roll.